Happy days, check it out. How do you feel when you get a delivery and you know exactly what's in it? Well, most of you that suffer with GAS, Gear Acquisition Syndrome, know that this should be something interesting. So let's crack it open. The latest Fujifilm flash from Nissin is out. It's the i60A. It has some marked improvements, but is it worth the extra? Let's check it out. I'll be honest, I have seen a pre-production model of this already, so I know that I'm pretty excited about the new interface. But we're going to take a look at what's inside and then look at it side by side. And then you can decide what you think. There's a nice little tag there to help me open it. Foolishly, I didn't spot that. First of all, typically a quick manual which explains the settings, the modes, and nice and simple. Well laid out, easy to make sense of, and notice how to pair with Commander Air 1. That's a big deal with this flash. On the flip side, it's not in English, so there we go. That's nice. And as expected, the flash comes... That's everything there. The flash comes in a nice, soft case. Little pull tab there, a belt loop there, which is very handy. That will then live on my belt. Well, if it's a wedding for the reception, so it's ready for the first dance. I'll give you the stats in a bit when we run through it, but let's just pull it out. There's another little pocket where you will have this filter to soften the flash, if that's what you're into. Tucked away in here. The stand, very handy. Cold shoe there and a quarter inch screw thread right there. Let's just take it out of the package in there. There's the back screen there. One dial which feels a lot sturdier, a lot tougher. And another one that's not so difficult to turn. On off button there and a screen. That's obviously new. Little ready button there which should double as a test. If we flip it over four double A's. Now it's recommended to use rechargeables and there's the flash unit itself. Let's just look at the other side. Nothing there. The bottom as you'd expect. Nice and sturdy metal. There's the flash head itself and if you pop open here a little bit of a shield for bouncing your flash. Yeah, I know it's not called a shield. And the usual jargon there, it's made in Japan. Let's let's stick some batteries in and see what she's like fired up. Power it up. And there you have a nice little meter. If we turn this, I assume, it'll show you the modes. And we'll just quickly click through them. That is relatively stiff. As I say, that's good to save you from messing it about. And there we can move the power level. You notice 1 to 56 and 1 to 1 in manual. I tend to work in manual and TTL. So there's your TTL. You've got a plus 2 and minus 2 compensator. Down here we've got A, B and C. So wireless modes, as you can see, that button is now nice and illuminated in green, so it will fire. Not that that makes for great video, but there you go. There's another soft diffuser there. Also, that will help you out with your zoom. Let me run you through a few specs. You can already see one of them there, the zoom full frame equivalent of 24 to 200 mil. Flash duration for this thing at 1 800th to 1 20,000th of a second. The flash ready indicator is right there. 
the compensator as we went through minus two to plus two, and that's in a third EV steps. You can see it run through there. Very simple stuff. This has slave timing modes, instant sync and skip, pre-flash, wireless RF operation, it's stated to work at a distance up to 30 meters. And of course, that's a slave mode that it runs. It has eight channels of wireless communication. There we go. Put it into manual, hold down that button there with the H and you're in high speed mode in manual. On to ready, fresh batteries on. And it's off, pretty good. Apparently the recharge isn't really much better than the previous model, but again, for me, for my use, that was fine. This is looking like just that extra bit of power might make the difference. As you can tell, really it's the head that's a bit bigger, but it is about 300 grams without batteries. 98 by 73 by 112 mil. That's the size that you're looking at. So let's just compare it to the i40. There's my i40 next to the i60. Obviously, it's rather dwarfed. In my opinion, the bodies are roughly the same. Maybe, yeah, the i60 is fatter fractionally, but the real difference is in the head. But of course, it's accommodating a much wider range of zoom. Now, I felt this was a perfect size on the X bodies, and many out there agreed, but wanted more power, more functionality, even the wireless modes, and that's what this offers. That unfortunately, other brands that probably should have still don't. Now, the i40 has a guide number 40, so the i60, 60. It's still not mind blowing, but for the size, for the weight, just enough for certain occasions. They both have manual and TTL control. They both have a vary power of 1 to 1 to 1 to 256. The bounce head, which is a big deal to me. To turn it, you can, it's, it's sturdier, so you can get it all the way around. And there's your stops. And if you go that way, you can get right the way around there. That's very good. And that is quite sturdy, really. I don't recall this one being that sturdy. No. You can see what I mean with this one being relatively easy to knock out of function. We've mentioned it already, but the i60 has a zoom of 24 to 200 compared to the i40 of 24 to 105. There are still no off camera terminals. Recycle time, interestingly, the i40 claims 0.1 to 4 seconds, whereas the i60 claims 0.1 to 5.5 seconds. The flash durations are exactly the same. The indicators, pretty much the same. The compensation, basically the same, except the i40 was in 1 over 2 steps, and now we're in 3rd steps. Of course, the i60 trumps it as far as sync modes and Wi-Fi modes. They both take AA batteries, pretty much the design, and that front is similar. Right then, so. Ready. And ready. Yeah, interesting. In this case, both sets of fresh batteries. I think this one really did get up and running a lot quicker, which is what I'd have hoped, to be honest, with the extra power that it has. Let's just throw it on a body and see what we think. Push it in. It's in nice and solid. Let's take a look at that. Well, apart from the fact that I should go a bit wider on the frame, you can see it fits nicely. Of course, they're going away from the mirrorless sort of sizes, but... You need it at the moment for the flash power. It seems that no one's really designing a flash with the power and capabilities that we want. 
in a matching size. The form factor is fine. It's light and it works well on top of the camera. Let's just give it a little test. Would I get this over the new Fujifilm flash? Well, I'm really sorry, Fuji, but this is trumping it for me so far, bar a few tests that need to happen. It's a big positive from me at least. And if you're a fan of the i40, I don't think you'll be disappointed with this. Of course, it has all those extras. For those of us that don't shoot constantly with flash, it may well have arrived at the point that we can say, yeah, Fuji X series only all the way. It's definitely a worthy upgrade. Price wise, yep, yeah, I think it's there. Definitely compared to the Canon Nikon equivalents, which, yeah, are stronger still. Whatever. I'm just going to say yes and leave it at that. Get involved. Subscribe. Thanks. For your patience. <laughs> Put it down. Walk away. Now.